This is kvci.blogspot.com. I'm over in Madison, uh, Florida. And uh, as you know, I've been following the equipment team, what's going on in Willacoochee. And we also down here in Madison, and they had a problem down here with the alleged voter fraud. And I just happened to got a call a few minutes ago, and I came down here. I see about 20 people here right outside of the courtroom. And uh, you the attorney? Yes, my name is Jamie Coleman. I represent Raven Williams. Okay, what was the purpose of today? The meeting? Um, the purpose of today was to ask the judge to dismiss the information that was filed, dismiss the charges that were filed against our clients. Um, basically, our argument was that the state still wasn't able to allege in their information document, in their charging document, that a crime occurred and um, didn't specify what the crime was. Um, so what you saw today was arguments um, made, uh, um, made on behalf of five defendants um, by three attorneys, and the state attorney was present, um, just asking the judge to dismiss the charges against them. Okay. Where do you work out of? Where are you from? I'm from Tallahassee, Florida. I work at a firm called Vieira Williams. Okay. Now, we see that voter suppression allegedly is, is happening across the state of Georgia, and apparently Florida, and perhaps the nation. How many people, first of all, are involved in down here in Madison? Initially, we had nine defendants. Um, the state had offered, made offers to, um, made two offers, um, and those those people took the offers. Um, everyone has been given the opportunity to, um, I guess, what was it, a plea? Take a plea. Um, but this is just so fundamental, so crucial that um, we just couldn't accept a plea, especially when there was no wrongdoing or crime being occurred. All that, all that our clients were trying to do was help people who otherwise would not have voted vote. We understand pretty near the same thing happened in Brooks County, and I've been following that, and they filled the newspapers up with the fact that there was a spike in absentee ballots when the state of Georgia approved several years ago that anybody could file by absentee ballots. And that means that if, if everybody in the state of Georgia filed by absentee ballot, there would definitely be a spike in absentee ballots. Nobody have addressed that issue. Nobody have published that in the local newspaper in South Georgia. And so it seems as if though uh, people are either ignorant of that law or they want to prosecute even equipment 10 or equipment 12 now. And so it seemed like that Madison may be... Um, I mean, I think it's exactly the same issue. I, I think I would go a little, a little, a step further and say it's just not about the law being changed because absentee voting has been around for years. It's just the more the African American community utilizes it, the more it's becoming a problem. In 2009, 2008, whenever the presidential elections was and African Americans came out in record numbers and voted for the first black president, that's when the laws started to change. And then Republicans, a Tea Party movement formed, and they started really looking at how is it that we can disenfranchise the black vote? How do we get less of them out there? So they cut down early voting and they made restrictions that, you know, we would argue are unconstitutional on absentee voting. And so this is the effect of that. There's been something else that I've noticed too, and, and you have to, excuse me, I'm asking all of you all to forgive me because this is the first time I did not have my camera with me. I keep it with me at all times, and so I personally believe that God had a purpose in me, us doing it like this. I really believe that. But um, it, when I, I heard this on radio, the conservative radio station this morning, and I called some people to see if it was actually taking place. That's why I'm over here. Nothing is published in the newspaper. Uh, something that is important as voter. Uh, for a leg voter for why do you think I don't I'm not sure if it's here or not But I know in Valdosta and Brooks County. It seems nothing is in the news about this It seemed like put my team the same way. It's all hush hush. Why is why do you think it's so quiet? Um, well, we've had news coverage off and on for the last year We've had WCTV come out ABC News of Tallahassee. I think Valdosta has been out here um, We've had some co coverage. I think even the American press was here today asking for a statement from attorney Grant who's with Parks and Crump but um, why is this issue not as big as, as it should be? Um, to the public, we're not quite sure. Um, but with that being said, it is a very pivotal, it's a very crucial case. Um, this case, if the judge um, rules for the state, will have a chilling effect on how people participate in the voting process. Um, so it is important. 
um, I think just as a nation, we just need to get our priorities together. Instead of enacting laws requiring our young men to pull their pants up, we should enact laws that allow people to be able to vote um, before 9 p.m. You know, they're not standing in line for two till 2 a.m. in the morning. So as a nation, our priorities are a little bit skewed as to what's important or not, but this is definitely an issue that's important to all of us. The attorneys that you see here are pro bono attorneys. I'm a tax attorney. Jasmine Rand does civil rights um, cases. Um, that we are not criminal attorneys, but we felt it important enough to be here and to represent um, the Madison Nine, the purveyors of justice in this case. Before I close this out, there's one more thing I want to know. How long have this case been going on? The Quitman 10, uh, they had a, originally had a court date set for December 10th over there, and now they've changed it sometime early next year, and it will definitely be over two years, and they still waiting to face, uh, to go to court. Uh, how long has this case been going on? Um, the investigation has probably been going on since 2010. The election happened in 2010. FDLE took um, lead on, the, on this case and started investigating to bring these charges forward. I think actual charges were char brought um, late 2011 or early 2012. But the case from inception to now has been going on since 2010. Okay. I want to thank you very much thank on the short notice. I just happened to come. I heard it on radio, and I called all my friends. I said, I got to get over here because I'm following all of this stuff. It is indeed amazing what I've seen Greetings. and what I'm, I'm learning about Madison, voter suppression and Florida, voter fraud. It is just home of the Madison What's uh, more troubling who to brought me up is on the news voter media. I'm not talking about Florida, but in South charges. Georgia, how they... Much Don't like want the equipment the team about the equipment team, they have offered in them, County, Georgia. just like you said, plea bargains like even the over there, and they refuse, they're they're going all the way with it because they, it could and be today, equivalent to the Little Rock Nine or what have you, because this is it's just unbelievable. And so I'm going to put any closing remark to you, like the where are you all going, anything like that. Just keep us in your prayers, you know, we thank you for doing your best to disseminate this case and get the information out, the word about what's going on here in Madison, and we ask for your support and your continued attention. Thank you so much. Once again, this is kvci.blogspot.com, George Boston Lambs, I'm out of Valdosta, Georgia, I'm in the room about 20 people, and I say it before and I'll continue to say it, that something must be done in terms of getting notifying the general public about what goes on in our community because too often we do ju we just do not get the news in South Georgia and apparently it's pretty the same in South Florida and uh, I mean North Florida and so I just want to close this out by saying to you I want to thank the attorney I want to thank all the people that came here uh, this morning I'm heading back to Valdosta but look I do this because I want you all informed and this is what I do by our government freedom of speech and freedom of the press yet we see ours deteriorating, if not being destroyed. Now, I hope to show you some clippings from the local newspapers here in North, North Georgia concerning the Madison Nine. Yes, the Madison Nine. And then I'm gonna show you, uh, put some video beneath the Madison Nine to show that the Valdosta Daily Times, local television stations and radio stations have ignored public meetings that had a direct impact with the 2012 elections when it comes to black African Americans not seeing or not having or rather having to produce a copy of an ID just to pick up a sample ballot. You will see wherein people talked about names being left off of the ballot. You will see where the Secretary of State, Brian P. Kemp, sent an investigator down from Macon, Georgia, to Quitman and Brooks County, Georgia, yet the South Georgia news media have yet to report the beef concerning that meeting. The Quitman Free Press, and I do mean the Quitman Free Press, that started back in the 1800s, also, in my most humbled opinion, and I am willing to face, face anyone even in a court of law to show that I can prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that information have been hidden or just not reported to the general public. And therefore, the old Valdosta 1860 charter mentality that was displayed in City Hall leading into Judge Edwards Municipal Courtroom mentality still exists. And here is what that 1860 charter said that was displayed until in 2004 
as a retired military veteran, I took offense to it not only for myself, but for all active duty people stationed at Moody Air Force Base and all retired commissioned and non-commissioned officers and white, right, and black people who want to see America move forward because it's our sons and daughters who are on foreign battlefields fighting to protect these rights for foreigners, but yet they refuse. And I say they, I'm talking about newspapers such as the ones in Valdosta, in Quitman, the Quitman Free Press, the Thomasville Times Enterprise, and the Madison Two newspapers did not even put a picture of the president's re-election, a picture of him on the front page of their newspaper. Now, they own those papers, and so we commend them for being entrepreneurs and reporting what they want to report. But isn't it nice that when black African Americans and white right people put themselves in the United States Air Force, Marine, the Coast Guard, the Navy, or any branch of the service, some of them we don't even know about because even the those areas are top secret, but yet they don't just represent one political party, but they represent all the American people. So isn't it not strange that people in America can go in foreign nations and fight for the rights of others, but will not stand up and fight for what has made this nation the envy of the world? I'm going to show you some clips. I'm going to put video beneath this information and because I did not do the videos in terms of produce the information that's in them, you cannot refute the truth that you see. You cannot refute the fact that in the Thomasville Times, instead of putting a picture of the president's re-election win, they put a picture that Mitt Romney won the state of Georgia. Even today, just yesterday, Boehner and the president, Mr. Boehner and the president met. Yet on the Valdosta Daily Time, it was as if though they could not find a picture with the two of them sitting down in peace and harmony, just like the blacks and whites and Jews and Gentiles and Protestant and Catholic and Democrat and Republican and Green Party and Independents all sit down together as Americans for the good of our beloved nation. It is sad for what we see in this nation. Even when blacks did not have a right to vote, could not travel in the country, didn't have a right to maintain a family structure, stripped of their name, their God, their religion, their historical ties to the motherland of Africa, cannot speak their mother tongue, whatever that, all this was stripped from them. But in addition, black African Americans did not deny anybody the rights that was denied them and yet we never struck out at any of the other 43 all white male presidents that you see are being done across this nation today and so i just want to close this out but this is only the beginning of an introduction to let the american people know in georgia florida and around the united states i want them to realize one important thing we can elect race we can let political party affiliation destroy us as a people, it will also destroy us as a nation. We must come together and we must unite around the commonality of all of God's created beings or we are doomed as a nation. I know, I know, I know. You say, some of you, not all of you, some of you don't believe that American can be destroyed. Some of you don't believe that America can go down like ancient Rome. They would never have dreamed that Rome would go down into ruins. But Jesus said it perhaps best that a house divided against itself should not stand and could not stand. I know you say somebody else said that instead of Jesus, but Jesus said a house divided against itself could not stand. And the house of America will be destroyed unless we come together and accept one another as God's children. The Democrats need to work together with the Republicans, the Independents, and the Green Party. If Rush Limbaugh, if Glenn Beck, if black female columnist Don Parker got the answers for the president, 
then they need to come forward with those answers, lay them on the table in the Congress, and let the people weigh the good of the brain power in our nation so we can move forward and not back up. We're all in this together. It's not a fight against Barack Obama. The fight is between right and wrong. The fight is against Satan and Jesus. The fight is against God and the devil. And the Bible says in the New Covenant, for we fight not against flesh and blood. Both Democrats and Republican and Independent and Green Party and others are flesh and blood. Black and white and Jew and Gentile, Protestant and Catholic are flesh and blood. And I'll repeat again, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities of power and spiritual wickedness, wickedness, wickedness in high places. Many of those high places will send our sons and daughters to die on foreign battlefields to protect free speech, freedom of the press, freedom of religion. But when it comes down to people in Quitman in Brooks County, Georgia, in Madison County, Florida, well, you sit back and you start following the Quitman team. Look at my over 200 video, over 2,000 all together. I do this because as a retired military veteran, I don't have no choice. It's like I return home on another front to fight a new war. I got my uniform on, and there are others to follow because we cannot win this, saying halt to the rear and going away from the problems and the, the, the impediments that is destroying our beloved nation. So once again, this is KVCI, which means keeping Valdos the citizens informed, and now we intend to keep our entire nation in form because Jesus said and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set and make you free and just remember where there is no truth there can be no freedom and if they don't want you free then don't be fooled by them and when I say them I'm talking about anyone if they want you free they will give you truth because they would understand what the Messiah Jesus said and ye shall know the truth and that the truth shall set and make you free just as sure as that column there and that column And when you walk in truth, you are strong. And when you walk in weakness, you are weak. And you're not beautiful to anybody except those who follow the line of that Satan, unholy divine. Once again. This is the great seal of the United States of America, which also had its beginning on stone in Africa. The founding fathers of this republic borrowed them without permission and adopted them as symbols of our beloved nation. This is Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., a nonviolent prophet of our day. And of course, this is the scholar, the great Malcolm X, from the Nation of Islam, studied under Elijah Muhammad, who got his teaching from Master Farad Muhammad, a European white man, who taught him the history of the black race, and revealed to that degree before. And again, as always, the black woman, Rosa Parks, 
looking out of the window because she saw something that very few others saw. Undoubtedly, she may have seen this man, President Barack Hussein Osama, President Barack Hussein Obama. Let us look at the word above his head and pray, not only for our president, but for our beloved nation. May God bless you and may heaven smile upon you.